Hello and welcome to another episode of The Living Philosophy. Today we're going to dig deeper into the psychology of conspiracy theories and today we're going to be talking about the psychology of the New World Order. And you've probably been hearing about this lately with the talks of coronavirus vaccines. It's, a, it's, an, old, it's an oldie in the world of conspiracies. So it's, it's the idea that there is a, a group a uh, cabal of very powerful people who are controlling the world, who are the puppet masters pulling the strings behind the world governments and behind the various corporations. And these are the, the manipulators. This is the real power of the world. And you'll often hear conspiracy theorists use the word they. And it, it's a vague term, generally, uh, and there's no... They mightn't spell out who that they is. It's a, it's a shadowy kind of idea that perhaps they're not quite sure but if, if you push a conspiracy theorist they will normally go towards some version of the new world order theory so the candidates for this are the Rothschild family who are a, a, a very rich banking family back in 18th century Germany and we still see them cropping up I remember one of them had the Chancellor for the Exchequer of Britain so the, the guy who controls the Treasury and the Shadow Chancellor so the opposition's uh, Chancellor for the Treasury they were both on the same yacht which was a, a Rothschild yacht about uh, 10 years ago and uh, that certainly does look kind of funny, doesn't it, for a banking family uh, from, you know, that no one really hears about, but it's kind of in the shadows to, to host that kind of power. There's a lot more people on that yacht as well. So you find these people cropping up. They're very interesting. So the Rothschilds is one big candidate. The, the Rockefellers, of course, the, the, the oil barons of, of the US, they're generally connected there with the Rothschilds. You also got the Bilderberg Group, which is a, a group that was set up I think after World War Two to foster uh, relations between the the Atlantic countries, uh, so between Europe and America, basically to kind of continue the the hegemony of the of the Atlantic countries, and so we'll see people now like Bill Gates and Oprah thrown into that group as well, and so these are the kind of people that will get referenced with the in the great shadowy they of the of the New World Order kind of theory. Now again, as ever. Um, I don't actually know the truth of any of it. Some of it is actually quite convincing. And as as with conspiracies, if you go down a rabbit hole, you will often find things to, to kind of like move you that direction. So it is really interesting. And I don't really want to comment on the truth of it or the non-truth of it here, but on the psychology of it. What if we took all of this as a symbol? This, this idea of the they, this idea of the puppet string masters hiding in the shadows, controlling the destiny of humanity. What if they were actually... Well, what if we take that as a, as a psychological principle, as a, as a psychological projection and actually uh, a sort of personal myth-making or cultural myth-making? And what would that mean? So approaching it from a sort of Jungian archetypal angle. What it reminds me of is that that aspect of, of schizophrenia, uh, the, the psychotic delusions, that is very common to the point where it's, it's a trope in, in popular culture, portrayals of, of schizophrenia. But the idea of the... The paranoia that the, there's someone watching them. And someone I know has a friend who who had this uh, condition or who experienced uh, psych psychotic uh, breaks, and she had this idea that there was people underground, people watching. There was everything was everything was tapped, and everyone was kind of watching, and there was there was some kind of shadowy figures watching them from outside of their their awareness and looking at them from underground. And also the the idea of aliens watching. This comes from from this kind of angle as well. And I think that there's a way of mapping those over between the New World Order and and this this idea of the 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 other watching us, the, the shady underground other watching us in, in schizophrenia. Okay, so let's look at it. What's going on there with schizophrenia? So if you look at, at schizophrenia as the a disintegration of the, the personality. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll reference the video, but in brief, the, the structure of the self of of an individual is that you've got the ego, which is the, the tip of the iceberg. It's the bit of the, the self that is above the water. And this is the I, this is the things you identify as, the things you consciously adhere to. And then you've got the, the, the majority of the unconscious, which is underwater. And this is actually outside of the sphere of the ego. Think of things like breathing or prejudices, discrimination, like kind of those cognitive biases that are contained in the in the unconscious and are quite difficult to shift as we've seen so 
it's within that. So you can see that what's happening in a psychotic break is that the ego has lost the integrity, its control in some way, the, or at least the illusion of control that the ego normally has. It's, it's lost that distinctness. And so contents are bleeding up from the unconscious into the ego and overwhelming it. And overwhelming it with these very strong symbolical contents. And as in a in a dream, to, to us uh, in, in the, the ego world of human transaction day to day the 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 dream world seems bizarre and it seems like those symbols oh how did i think that that was going to happen or how how bizarre did i believe this this random thing and was afraid of this seemingly insignificant thing in day-to-day -day life so it's kind of like that where those symbols are so charged in that state and once something feels truly real on an emotional level it doesn't really matter about the content because the emotional level is really where fear is at and you're, if your ego conscious can't talk that back then you're in trouble and that's where the psychotic break kind of happens where you get overwhelmed and we'll find people having dreams of, of tidal waves and of floods drowning the world at, at times like this and this is the, the contents of the watery unconscious the, the deep waters beneath the iceberg flooding the dry land of ego consciousness and so what's happening when someone is having these delusions of the someone in the in the shadows is someone underground well the underground is a very way just like the iceberg it's the the the, the ego consciousness is overground and the the unconsciousness is underground and what we find happen with like shadow psychology is that if you cut a part of yourself off so much and you suppress a part of yourself so much, then it has the potentiality of becoming an autonomous personality and of continuing in its own wake. And if if there's enough of these autonomous personalities, then you, you can get something like uh, just an overwhelming deluge of the unconscious because you're not necessarily yourself anymore. And your ego is just... Uh, one tiny character in a in a cast, or you're just caught in the net of a greater self and and landscape of the psyche. And so the the paranoia there is that someone's watching me, someone's underground trying to get me, and in a way that's that's quite accurate. Like we we think when you look at someone with schizophrenia, you think oh so sad that they think that the FBI is watching them or the CIA is watching them or there's aliens and it's to misunderstand it in some sense because those things are, are powers in the shadows if you look at those symbols aliens are an unknown alien to, to the ego world to the ego consciousness alien is something that is, is a part the FBI and the CIA are powerful things operating in the shadows beyond our knowledge and all of these things kind of come together there's a common symbolism there of of the unconscious of the other side of the of that ego unconscious divide that other side has come alive and is watching you and is working against you or this force is operating in there that you're not in control of and that's what where that kind of um schizophrenic idea comes from and i think we can map that over onto the idea of the new world order and this idea that someone is, is, is pulling the puppet strings of the world and someone is in control. And just as in the case of schizophrenia, the FBI and CIA are still operating in the real world. There may be aliens out there and so many other things going on. But the, the reality of the situation is that it's 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 perhaps more of a symbolical kind of thing. It's, it's uh, the idea of, well, we could take this as a cultural schizophrenia. So if it was a cultural schizophrenia, then imagine that there's there's a power out there that's, that's guiding the direction of humanity. And that would appear as aliens to us. If it was an unconscious force guiding us. If you think of the way that Jung talks about the, the self, the, the very centre of our, of our being, then that, that does actually kind of map over that there's, there's something guiding it and it's not ego consciousness. And so the cultural schizophrenia of the New World Order conspiracy might just be this idea that this fear of what is controlling us and same with like the old Christian ideas of the devil and 
that actually might be a very good map over onto the New World Order as well, is, is this, this idea of negative forces and positive forces out there, that God was out there and that the devil was out there. And the New World Order is seeing the devil out there, but where is, where is God? It's, it's, a, it's a more hopeless position, I guess. But within that, there's something really interesting there, though, isn't there? The, the idea of, of the devil. And it's, it's perhaps not a, an actual cabal of individuals that's out there but the the force of humanity itself the the evil drives within us the, the drives for extorting all the the minerals from the earth and plundering all the trees and just manipulating other humans for our own ends just to extort the most profit the most luxury the most everything we can get out of it and the sheer inequality so the idea of a new world order is perhaps seeing that it's our negative aspects that are ruling the world rather than our positive aspect and that might be the thing of post-christianity being denuded that we no longer see the, the the positive sides of humanity working as a cultural collective force we only have the the negative forces of of our own greed and our own deeper instinctual drive so we see the social media harnessing our, our dopamine drives and our reward circuitry and so maybe it's it's this idea that the new world order is is seen it's, it's an old religious idea and just sees that the the negative aspects of us are ruling the world not negative people individuals but something we're all responsible for because we're all giving into it we're all now maybe it's just because we, since God is dead, since Nietzsche proclaimed God's death in the, at the end of the 19th century and, and God has been progressively dying and even those who are religious, they rely on their own decision-making processes rather than turning to God for, for a tough decision. Most religious people will now be merely cultural um, religious uh, rather than actively leaning into that higher power within their lives and praying to God for an answer and that's I guess a scary thing and yeah I guess we have no superordinate force and then we just see that the there's a new world order and the new world order is 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 connected with that old satanic idea that the, the devil idea of our deeper instinctual urges ruling the world so that's uh my reflection for the day on the the psychology of the symbolism of of uh, conspiracy theories i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please subscribe if you haven't already otherwise i'd love to hear from you down in the comments and i shall see you next time thanks for watching